the oldest anarchy game mode on Hypixel is a game focused on progression, whether that be by leveling up or acquiring wealth and resources, the most effective way to advance in the pit is by killing other players. Kill rewards include XP and gold, as well as the possibility for a fresh mystic drop. In the more than two years that the pit has been around, the player base has done its best to optimize how quickly kills can be farmed. Methods such as building rings to condense potential victims into a smaller area and using the best items possible to slay faster are both effective. However, these all take place under the assumption that no rules are to be broken. When joining the pit, it isn't unlikely to see low-level accounts with robotic movements being fed to a single person. Botting, as it's called, is hands down the fastest method of gaining XP, gold, and general wealth. That is, if you don't get caught. My name is Sudi, and welcome to another episode of Pit History. Botting is an illegal method of systematically farming low-level accounts in large quantities to maximize gains. Accounts are brought in using a program called OQ Mindbot, at which point they can perform different types of tasks. The program can have each and every account send a chat message, which allows them to join parties. On top of this, the bots can be told to go to a specific location to be farmed endlessly. Botting has evolved quite a bit since its inception. In the early part of March of 2019, a player known as Potty was pulling off some shady stuff. Using OQ Mindbot, he would join a solo UHC game with a full 70 player party. The bots were tasked to converge on his location. Some accounts would get caught in the border, but he would try to kill as many as possible. Using this strategy, it was pretty common to gain upwards of 50 score per game. Knowing how hard it is to progress in Hypixel UHC, that's pretty nuts. One day, while Potty was doing this, he accidentally joined the pit. The bots, being tasked with following him, did exactly that. From that day on, the pit would never be the same. As soon as Potty discovered the capabilities of OQ Mindbot in the pit, he almost immediately told people in the Utes group. This included Sir Deadly, Kagaru, Only Skelet, and Godfrey Ninja. Potty also let slip of his discoveries in a group centered around the Exhibition Hacked client, and it was at that point that a ranked Skywars hacking YouTuber known as I'm a Koala would create this clip. The footage you're seeing right now was then circulated among some circles of the pit, which is how both KDCon and Major Event learned how to bot. During this time, people didn't realize the most effective ways of farming these accounts, so back then it was straight up melee killing. The very first account that was botted a ton was OSGN, a shared account between Godfrey Ninja and Only Skelet. It was previously Prestige 15, but was quickly botted all the way up to 26. At this time, only a few people were actively botting, so they could go hours on end without being disturbed. Godfrey and Skelet would take turns botting, manually grinding with their swords, and reached a kill streak of over 6,000 after hours of work. Towards the end of April, OSGN ended up getting security banned, and its appeal was denied. During this time period, I was trying to sell my account, because I had stopped playing several months prior, but was still active in the community. Major Event approached me with a potentially lucrative offer. He said he could boost my account to Prestige 30, which would increase the price by a lot. He would take a cut of the profit and yada yada yada. Major only managed to get me up a few levels before he was caught, and the Sudi account was banned for a year. While this was happening, a new group was created, the OTDX Gang. For some reason, one of the people in my squad came up with the idea to bot a whole bunch of accounts to super high prestige and then sell them for profit. Oliver Tron bought 9 accounts, renamed them 01 through 9 DX, and then distributed them among our group. Major event was 01, I was 04, and as you can see, the rest of the boys were involved as well. Only a few of us had Oki Mindbot, so we would take turns farming the bots and share the gear while doing this. 
a few days into it, Major actually ran into Miniclune, who told him to stop botting. Somehow, he avoided getting banned, and business continued as usual. The next day though, my O4DX account somehow got Watchdog banned, which is actually crazy. Not only did I not hack on that account, but I was using vanilla Minecraft on a trackpad. Somehow your boy got false banned because I was flagged for hacking, but not botting. Interesting server that you have there, Hypixel. Very cool. Several more of us got banned in the beginning part of May, and the group fizzled out and died. This was the nail of the coffin for me, and I quit for quite a while after this. On the 23rd of May, 2019, the pit would be changed forever. The 0.4.1 update introduced quite a bit to the pit. A new map, the King's Quest, Hidden Jewels, and Dark Pants. The same update broke Pit Blob and made the level 1 version of that enchantment invincible. I talked about that in more detail in my History of God Pants video, linked at the top of the description. Though the update which brought a slew of new events to the pit was released about a month before this, the Dark Pants update was when botting really took off. One of the new minor events in that update was the auction, which shaped this game mode into a whole new meta. Auctions are a minor event which allow players to buy a range of potential items, such as random tier 3 mystics, philosopher's cacti, or most importantly, funky feathers and mystic repair kits. As more and more auctions occurred over time, feathers came to be very valued by the player base. It was now feasible to use as many mystics as possible without a fear of losing them. On top of that, Protection 1 armor could be used regularly for the first time since the patching of the log armor dupe. Funky feathers became the go-to currency for everyone, and the price capped at 11 or $12 per. Auctions are won by the player with the most gold, and botting was hands down the fastest way to get it. At this point in time, botting had evolved quite a bit. After players realized that manually farming with swords wasn't the most effective way of killing bots, they looked to other mystics. Devil Chicks was considered, but only effectively used by Potty, Kagaru, and Sir Deadly. They had used Volley 1 Devil Chicks 3 back in March to earn gold for their duping sessions, but normal Devil Chicks wasn't the most viable option. TNT Pants were also used, but the castle update made Pit Blob the most effective way of mind bot genocide. Not only did the invincibility of Blob 1 mean that it was impossible to impede the botters, but someone discovered that minecarts actually spawn in one of the caves under the farms area in Castle Map. If brought to the middle, a blob can be placed in a minecart so that it won't jump. This meant that it was impossible to kill or move the blob. Big time botters such as Katie Khan and Hazel filled entire lobbies with bots to farm upwards of 500 kills per minute. On maps without minecarts, Players would either build boxes for blobs, or build pillars and place water at the bottom so the blob can't jump. Both of these designs worked, but the boxes needed to be several layers thick because blobs can for some reason phase through walls on Hypixel. During this time period, a new phenomenon was discovered, rotation day lobbies. On the pit, the map changes every week on Tuesdays. Nowadays, the map goes from Elements, to Kings, to Corals, to Genesis, to Four Seasons, over a five week time span. This was back before Genesis was around though. Someone found out that lobbies stayed open around five hours after the rotation occurs, and could be used if at least one player remained inside. This meant that botters could go on for hours on end, completely unimpeded. After the map change, these lobbies were impossible to access, unless someone was warped in. It's worth noting that both major and minor events occur if more than 21 people are in a lobby. And when recounting his botting adventures to me, Katie Khan had this to say about King of the Hill events, more commonly referred to as Koths. Ranger Will told me he'd get about 130 gold per kill, and 8 to 10 kills per second. Multiply that by 4 for around 4 minutes is a pretty solid stream of gold. These rotation lobbies were extremely coveted. Sometimes random players would AFK in hopes of messing up the botters, which was very hard to deal with. A well-known botter named Bagan went as far as to crash someone's Wi-Fi so he could have the lobby to himself. 
This wasn't a one-time occurrence though. Katie Khan said he had someone DDoS Pineapple Bubble, since Pineapple was apparently trying to mess up his ventures. One time, Katie Khan fell asleep while his blob was going and woke up to see he had 10 million gold. Some crazy stuff went down in these rotation lobbies, especially revolving around events. Being the only sentient person in a lobby for auctions is a start, but that isn't even the half of it. For an unknown reason, using devil chicks in an 80 player botting lobby during a beast event would confuse the server. The chickens spawned by the bow wouldn't explode and actually reverted to their vanilla state. This is how eggs were created. It was also brought to my attention that the everyone gets a bounty event was literal insanity. When a player on the pit has a bounty, a bunch of invisible armor stands fly around them to give the effect. When 80 players get a bounty, at one time, in a single chunk, I think you can see where I'm going with this, lobbies would get super laggy and sometimes even crash because of the sheer volume of particles. Bagan lost several good lobbies to this. The lengths which players would go to win these auctions are absurd. Katie Khan and Hazel are particularly notable, as they were responsible for getting the Colcular account from level 0 to prestige 14 in a single botting session. Crazier than that, a month later they got the Hazel Isn't and Disappointing Egg accounts to Prestige 14 on the same night. Cade told me that at that point, the account would have enough renown for the max level of both Mysticism and Renown Gold Boost, which is why they stopped at Gold Brackets. It can't be understated how profitable these ventures were. Feathers sold for around $10, and they can come in packages as large as 5 on top of that, mystic drops happened at an absurd rate. Fresh mystics on average drop every 100 kills or so. When someone is getting 500 kills per minute, that's a lot of fresh. Yeah, just take a look. The pit would continue as it was for quite a while. The status quo of rotation day lobbies, auction sniping, and botting as a whole would remain untouched until the 6th of March 2020. On this date, the pit would receive its first update in over 9 months. Actually, that isn't entirely true. There was a small patch a week prior to this which attempted to patch the lobby lag exploit that I abused to no small degree showcased in this amazing video right here. With that shameless plug out of the way, let's talk about the Genesis update. As stated, the 0.4.2 Genesis map update on March 6th was the first major update the pit had received since Dark Pants from May of the previous year. In it, a new map, a really ugly map mind you, was released, on top of a whole bunch of random bug fixes that no one really cares about. The main feature of this new update was the two factions. During the Genesis map, you can either join the Angel faction or the Demon faction. Both have different perks, unlocked by gaining faction points. At this point in the game, faction points were only gained by killing players who had signed up for a faction. Kills gave 2 points if the victim was someone of the opposing faction, and 1 point if the victim was of your same faction. When this update dropped, there was a ton of hype around the two new faction rewards unlocked at 4000 points. These new items were the Archangel Chestplate and the Armageddon Boots, which are both cool ideas in concept. Because only players who had signed up for factions would reward points, botters were stifled. It was complicated getting a ton of accounts to navigate a GUI when the interface looks like this, but players eventually figured out how to get their bots to sign up for factions. With these cool new items, one might think that Miniclune would have implemented a patch to stop botting, or at least done something to make it harder. Nope, botting wasn't changed. Actually, that isn't entirely correct. The new map meant it was possible, and really easy, to bot from spawn. Welcome to the Hypixel network, the pinnacle of Minecraft servers. Anyway, botting at this point went on as usual until 6 or 7 weeks later, when Miniclune would release an update that would shake the foundation of the pit. This is the 1.0 full release of the pit. Oh boy, where do I even begin with this? The update that killed the pit? I wouldn't be wrong to say that. The new features brought in the full release changed the game immensely. The new Mega Streaks gave insane gold and XP rewards, but most strikingly was the new Uber Streak. 
The Uber Streak is a 400 kill challenge of sorts, which gives a slew of rewards upon completion. Considering the only measure added to do anything about botters was a 2 hour cooldown to prestiging, the game's economy was going to be in real bad shape as soon as botters got on that uber grinding, and boy they did. But before I get into that though, let's take a moment to appreciate how much the other mega streaks could be abused while botting. The main deficit to mega streaks is the added damage taken, which stacks over time so streaks can't last forever. While botting, no one is hitting you, meaning every single extra reward from mega streaks came at absolutely no cost. At this point in the game, Minikloon was pretty actively patching bugs, so players were reluctant to bot on their mains. Of course, some still risked it, but To The Moon was never abused before it was nerfed. At the outset of 1.0, To The Moon gave an additional double streak XP rather than the additional 1 times, meaning it would have been so broken to use. As mentioned in my gold exploits video, Hermit was bugged, so it had no cap to the kill rewards. I actually made a mistake in that video by saying it would take a 600 streak to reach 2.5k per kill. Kagaru corrected me and clarified it would actually take around 1600 kills, but in the grand scheme of a botter, that difference is negligible. With a max size botting lobby, Hermit would grant around 75 million gold per hour. Not many people abuse Hermit to its fullest, but the capability was there. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, or not, I don't know. Uber streaks. Of course, botters were going to abuse the living daylights out of Ubers, and why shouldn't they? At their height, gems were selling for more than $30 each. I was told someone even sold a gem for $50. This game is literal insanity. A ton of people hopped on this Uber streak hype train, including Ranger Will, Itai, Roz, Jebza, and Patricia. Miniclin doesn't really give a rat's ass about botters, but Lady Blue came in and banned quite a few of them, including everyone I just mentioned on top of Master Diets. Diets shared some screenshots with me, and if you take a look, he doesn't have a mega streak here. For a while, you could play without a mega streak if you prestiged and then didn't select one, though you wouldn't get extra rewards either. The upside to that is if you're this individual who is on a 3147 overdrive streak. I have several questions. By looking at the details for overdrive, the user takes 0.1 hearts of ultra true damage every hit after 5 kills above 50. This means every 50 kills the user will take an extra heart of damage per hit. If this individual were to get tapped by a gust of wind, the air movement would deal 62 hearts of damage. That was an unnecessary tangent, so let's get back on topic. Lady Blue's ban wave marked the beginning of the decline of botting. It would never be patched, per se, but the wider player base now kept a watchful eye on staff, as bans could come at any moment. Despite the ban wave, players continued to go about their business until June 8th, which marked the end of an era. It was on that day that Rotation Day lobbies finally got patched with a new party update. It was now impossible to warp the bots into the lobbies, and they would be forced to close after a while without any abuse being able to be done there. The patch also tried to prevent botting in dead lobbies, but it was still possible to get bots in if the bots themselves did slash play pit. From then on, all botting had to be done in publicly accessible lobbies. A few weeks later, Miniclune would implement another fix in regards to cheaters. On the 24th of June, a patch was rolled out which removed the prestige requirement of Hirose from 2 to 6. This meant cheaters had to grind their accounts to prestige 6 in order to be hop with dark pants, which was a huge step up from the previous system. Botters began to bot alt accounts to prestige 6 in order to dark hop because anything else risked an unnecessary ban. The prestige 20 requirements for uber streaks meant that not many players wanted to risk botting ubers, but a few did. The main contender was Bash, also known as Jeteril, who played and botted ubers on his prestige 18 account. Bash practically destroyed the entire market for uber drops, and he single-handedly brought the price of gems to $5 because of his sheer supply of them. 
That may not be entirely true, because a lot of other people were grinding at Ubers, but no one could do it as quickly as spotting. I messaged him to see if he had anything to say, and he told me this. Bash learned of the capabilities of TNT botting, and quickly got his account to Prestige 20. After hitting Prez 20, he only did Uber streaks, all the way to Prestige 32. This man got 12 prestiges without using Mega Streaks. It's actually insane the amount of profit he was generating. Using TNT, an Uber streak could be done in about 2 minutes. It was so profitable that Bash actually bought several Prestige 20 accounts to keep going. He's pretty well known because he's one of the few botters to have the balls to keep botting Ubers without being afraid of getting banned. July 17th had big news for Hypixel, though indirectly related to Pit. Several helpers were promoted to mod, including Pinoy Shrex, who frequently patrols the pit. However, it was also around this time that a change was made within the permissions of moderators and admins. Previously, only administrators had the authority to ban players for boosting, so botter bans were few and far between. Mods would join botting lobbies and ban the bots, but not the players abusing them. The bots would get cheating bans for anti-knockback or something along those lines. Hey Mr. Staff member, these are paid actors. I'm just having a fun time in the pit with my, uh, 79 laggy friends. Why do you ban? Satan told me one time he and his friends were botting in a rotation lobby when Megalatios, a mod, had a brain seizure. Direct quote, by the way. The mod banned some of the bots, typed in chat, and then watched as Satan and company instantly lied. The management of this server is unprofessional to the point that the pit is truly the closest thing Hypixel has to anarchy. After this promotion wave though, mods had the authority to ban players for boosting, and from then on, botting hasn't been safe. A new phenomenon occurred during one castle map rotation. Not a rotation day lobby, but actually the weekly public lobbies. Castle map is notorious for being really bad to streak in. All the nons, a streaker's usual victims, are busy running around the map, baking bread, trying to make cakes, or searching for sewer treasure. A woofing panda got sick of not being able to do uber streaks, so he decided to drop a few bots into the lobby. Voila! After a few minutes of a handful of bots being dropped into mid, suddenly there were nons everywhere, and uber streaks were once again feasibly completable in a time frame smaller than 3 hours. Nowadays, botting is a shell of its former self. You can still find the occasional player with high hopes going at it with a few bots in a dead lobby, but it's been quite a while since the pit has seen things on this scale. Silent botting is still around, but it's definitely risky. At this point, the mods are somewhat trigger happy, so killing a few bots could warrant a ban, even if they aren't your own. Of course the staff can't ban them all, especially when you have people like Harry botting while streaking on a pitfall livestream. The thing is, dude, why is there bots? Oh my god, are you serious? It's Harry. Um, I, I don't know, they just say. Ah, I see, I see. I can't say I blame these people though. When the staff care as much as they do, meaning not at all, no one's really gonna care when something is against the rules or not, if it gives them a slight edge in profit. We have a confirmed sighting of Minikloon in a botting lobby on the 4th of May 2019, and it's been well over a year since then, and this method of boosting is still around. I can't even with this server sometimes. Now, that was the history of botting in the Hypixel pit. The topic of botting as a whole is a very beefy one, but I did my best to get the relevant info out there. There's no way I was going to make this video on my own, so I'd like to thank everyone who helped me with information, screenshots, and footage. This includes Potty, Katicon, Kagaru, Satan, Rage Pit, Ranger Will, Emin, A Wolfing Panda, Master Center, Healthy Diets, Bash, Spooky, Grizzly, and I'm Shy. Shout out to Creechin for making the glorious thumbnail on this video, as well as Andrek for helping edit the voiceover. My personal gratitude goes to Vico for creating those really epic replays that you saw. His link is in the description. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment what I should cover next. 
I'm sure there are some details I may have missed covering this extensive matter, so if you thought of something, write it down in the comments below. I read all my comments, but if you want to be more direct, you can even send me a DM on Discord. My tag is on screen now. That'll do it for today's video. I've been your host Sudi, Pitfall, or should I say, PitMC, and I'll see you guys next time.